It's Blow Your Mind Learning with Lyle Dilly. Hey everybody, we're here to learn uh, everything you need to know about the Trace Bitmap feature. And welcome here to another edition of Blow Your Mind Learning with Lyle Dilly. We're going to explore the Trace Bitmap feature, how to create different images and stuff uh, within Adobe Flash and and it'll be uh, things using uh, images and stuff, maybe something you get from the net, maybe it's your own drawings and whatnot, and how to use this unique feature with Adobe Flash to quickly create um, these images within Adobe Flash and, uh, uh, you know, get running up and running really quickly. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Here we are with Adobe Animate CC 26, 2017. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, create an action script 3.0 with uh, just some of the basic stuff so I can show you this cool features. All right. So here we go at the screen. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and start by actually um, cutting out a cute little elephant. So let's go ahead and bring this elephant onto the screen. Boom, cute little elephant. Easy to go. But uh, there's something off a little bit this elephant. Um, this elephant uh, is uh, from a JPEG, so it's actually going to have some white outlining. But you, of course, you can't see because of white background. So go, let me go ahead and add a layer of background. Insert a layer. Okay. Take this layer to the bottom. This is going to be my background layer. So I'm going to go ahead and name it such. This, which is on the top layer, I'm going to lock for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and add into the background um, a box. Just a simple box. It's got some blue on it, just so we can see. Boom. You can instantly see the white background that's circling around this elephant, okay? We don't want that, all right? So, uh, you know, there's a million different ways that we can do this. Uh, some ways that I could do this is I could bring it into Photoshop, take out the white. I could bring it into Illustrator, take it out the white. But you know what? We're going to do it directly here in Flash. I'm going to show you the cool feature that does that, all right? I'll go ahead and lock this background so we can see what we're doing. All right, unlock the uh, the cool elephant layer. Let's just go ahead and name it elephant. <laughs> All right, I know what we're talking about. Keep organized. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. It's a it's already a bitmap. We can move it around. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under modify bitmap, and there's a button that says trace bitmap. Okay, so uh, we have a couple features here. All right, uh, different thresholds, different things, stuff to play with because each image has its own individual needs, okay? Um, so what we have right here is we have a color threshold of 100, okay? How many colors can it go ahead and use? What's the maximum number? Now, anybody who's familiar with uh, vectorization knows that the max color, uh, max colors really makes a difference in how that image does. The same goes with here, okay? So... Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little lower. I'm going to say 30, just to keep in mind all the different things. But if I really wanted to go to, I could count them. I could say uh, the darks are one color, the lights are one color. So I could say 1, 2, 3. This white's a third one. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There's actually only four colors. But just to keep it on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and um, and leave it at this. Now... We have a minimum area. Minimum area of pixels is how big I want the pixels to, to go on this image. Um, the lower the number, the more detail, but also, you know, the bigger the file size. The higher the number, the less the detail, because you have a minimum area that you're, you're wanting to do. To be honest with you, okay, this is a very simple drawing. I don't want my minimum area to be too low. It'll actually make my life really hard, which I'm going to go ahead and showcase in a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and say 50, all right? Try to keep this as close to the original image as possible. Now, we have corner thresholds. Do we want it to be curvy or do we want it to have corners? Many corners, normal, which is a, a, a it's going to do the best guess, or a few corners. We're just going to smooth. This is a very smooth drawing, so I'm going to go ahead and say few corners. Curve fit. Pixels, that means I am going to fit the curves directly to the pixels that they see. Uh, tight, very tight, all the way to very smooth. I'm going to go ahead and say smooth. 
smooth out it and make it a very smooth drawing. And that's what we're going to do here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And we're going to see how that turned out. Now, if you look, it made a lot of different um, suggestions on how it, that it, that is going to look. Now, obviously, this isn't exactly how we want to do it. So let's go ahead and back this up. And try it one more time, right? I press Control Z to back it up a couple times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it one more time. And this is one of the things that you're going to have to do when you're doing the trace bitmap feature is if it didn't do exactly what you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and put the color threshold up. I have a feeling it's exactly what the issue is. Okay. Oh, haha. Minimum area. That's probably what it was. I had it at 150. That wouldn't help. Boom. All right. Now, if you notice, this isn't exactly what we wanted either. So I'm going to go ahead and back that up. I'm going to say normal, normal, color threshold 100, boom. Like I said, you're going to have to feel out how you want it to finally look. And a lot of it is going to be you actually starting to, to do it, changing a few things until you get that final look you want. I'm pretty happy with this. I could probably get a little bit tighter, but we can definitely work with this kind of image. All right, here's the real benefit. When I clicked off the image, you no longer saw, all right, all of the little dots. Now, with that being said, with all these little dots, now I can click on the dot here. And if you notice, it's just selecting it. It basically did a vectorized version of that, the, the, this, this white dot area. So I can click on it. Boom. Done. Click on it. Delete. I'm just pressing the delete button. Delete. 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 Look at that. I now suddenly have a perfect version of my elephant that I can move around anywhere on the screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the library. Not go to the library. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a symbol so nobody can mess with it. Elephant. Let's go ahead and keep it a movie clip. Boom. Now nobody can mess with it. Now, ah, just like you know, I can now pull as many versions of this elephant as I need for my project. All right, so that is a really cool feature on uh, on how to use the break apart, um, not the break apart feature, but the trace bitmap feature here in Adobe Flash. And you can tell that it's going to uh, really make this um, easy for you to use. Now. Um, before I let you go, let me go ahead and uh, show you one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and insert another layer. I'm going to lock this layer, make it disappear. And uh, I want to create myself. All right? Because you don't necessarily always just have to do this. You can even do more complex drawings. So, if I take myself from my YouTube page. Oh, look. <laughs> I'm big. I'm going to go ahead and ratchet this down a little bit. Alright, so this is me from my YouTube page. Now this is a fairly complex drawing. It is a, um, obviously, it is, uh, uh, you know, something that I had created in multiple different objects. And I wanted to go ahead and break this part and maybe even pull myself out. Now, I can also do this in Adobe Flash, so sometimes you might have like a, maybe it's a Jeep or something, or maybe it's an image or a photo or something like that. You want to go ahead and break it apart and use those features too. You can still use the trace bitmap feature for that as well. It doesn't have to be with simple drawings. You could even do the more complex stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and take on this, go to trace bitmap, and I'm really going to go ahead and do this minimum area to say two because I want a certain amount of detail for my face to still stay. I'm going to press OK. Alright. Because it's so small, it's a little harder. But, now though, I can go ahead and use some of these features and actually start deleting entire areas. I can even do this, delete all this up here, delete all this over here, 
Look at me. I'm just quickly taking apart this entire feature until I cut myself out. All right. You can tell that this is going to be a real benefit to what I'm doing by doing it this way. All right. You can tell with a little bit of practice and a little bit of stuff, I can actually cut myself out, right? Um, I hope this is a boon to everybody trying to learn about this cool um, trace bitmap feature and how they might be able to use it for their own art. Uh, play with it. Uh, take some different stances on it. See uh, what you could do to increase resolutions and stuff. There's tons of buttons, tons of ways for you to do it. The best way for you to use this cool break. This cool trace bitmap feature is to practice with it, to test with it, to figure out what's best for your particular image, and then use it. Um, the more and more you use it, the better and better you'll get at it, and uh, you can use it for all sorts of different animation schemes here within uh, Adobe Flash. All right. Well, thank you for joining uh, me for another Blow Your Mind Learning with Lyle Dilly. Uh, hopefully this is uh, helpful for you, and uh, we'll have many more videos to come. Appreciate it. Talk to you later.